Hey guys, welcome back to another Gaming Memories video. Here we are taking a look at Choro Q that was actually released for the PlayStation in Japan back in 1996. The game was also released in Europe under the name of Penny Racers. And over the years, subsequent games in the series were also given other type branded names by the name of Gadget Racers and even Road Trip. The game is not your typical style of mainstream racing game that you may be more familiar with. Yes, it does use like racing style aesthetics and mechanics and so forth, but the premise of the game is it's based around more like type of cartoony, kind of more toy car style racing variants. Almost kind of like micro machines, but from a perspective of an, of an actual normal racer, which you can see from the visuals. Graphics are very, very like cartoony, they're very quirky, they're very into a point more based or aimed towards like kids, and it actually suits that kind of play style. Actually, having played the game for a while, the games themselves, even I played a few games in the series in this, and they're actually quite good. They do take a while to get used to, and the handling aesthetics and the physics, although in this first game, are quite good. They can be a bit fiddly the best of times to get used to but again it's like anything else with a lot of these games you do have to give yourself a bit of time to get familiar with them so that you can actually get the hang of it but if you keep playing through it eventually you'll be able to figure it out but each sequel that actually was released further on there was obviously different and better tweaks in the likes of in terms of the gameplay aesthetics and so forth but for what it is it's actually a quirky and actually fun little racing game that is actually worth playing if you're looking for something a little bit different. It has all your kind of similar aspects that you get in a typical racing game where you have different types of tracks to race on like as you can see you're racing on like the proper like race tracks. You also have kind of like highway style race tracks to race on in different types of environments. You have different style of cars that you can race with both from classic cars even to like sports coupes even more obscure kind of vehicles even like the dump trucks and so forth so it definitely tries to appeal to different types of audiences that are a fan of cars but also maybe fans of other types of vehicles and it tries to add everything into its own little mix it is actually a fun game but i will admit it definitely is challenging you definitely will need a lot of patience to play this game as the control system like i mentioned although it does work it can be a bit on the fiddly side and it does leave room for a lot of errors to take place when you're driving because as you can see even with the collision detection against the walls if you keep hitting barriers and so forth it will slow you down to a point that the computer controlled opponents also in the race will actually get that far ahead that it'd be very very hard for you to actually catch them so it can make it quite difficult to win races in the game but again it's just one of those things where the more you practice it the better you'll actually get at it you do also have to be careful though when you're actually driving around corners at high speed if you're actually holding on to the direction button when you're going around the corner the car does have a tendency to start going into a drift and sometimes the car can literally just do a complete spin out and then left then with nothing then so you have to kind of try and pick up the pace again to try and catch up but by then you've already lost your position and it's very very hard to regain that once you've actually lost it. Even though it does have its own gripes, it definitely is something that's very different and very quirky and definitely unique. And there isn't too many games like this, even on the likes of even modern consoles that you actually see today. You, you do see a few of them and you can see where they got their influences from. But there's very few, even to a point where you would actually have seen back in this time period. This game also did go on to release other types of sequels on the PlayStation. I will actually be covering more videos on that at a later stage to so make sure to keep an eye out for them. As this series, even though the games are difficult like I mentioned, the game series was also highly successful in Japan, which is why they actually released a lot of sequels. So it's definitely something worth looking into. And it's quirky enough and it's obscure enough for you to actually want to actually try this out and just to even experience something that is very very different from your mainstream racer. So if you are looking for something that ticks all those boxes, this may be something that might be worth looking into. 
And if you'd like to see more videos and reviews of these type of racing games that were released on the PlayStation in Japan, then make sure to leave a like on the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and again hit that bell icon to be updated whenever future videos are released. And also be sure to check out some of the other videos here on the screen where I have provided other reviews and similar gameplay type videos of other games that were released on the PlayStation. So as always, make sure to keep playing those classic games and enjoying them and keep those gaming memories alive.